We are glad that you've chosen to worship with us as we celebrate the day of Pentecost. Our contemporary worship, one of our six weekly services, will begin in a few moments. at Our Savior's Lutheran. We are the Celebrate Band, and we are so excited that you are here to sing with us. That will be awesome. It is the day of Pentecost, and it is going to get warm in here. So listen to the songs. We are starting fires. We are burning flames. Pay attention to the words. It'll be a fun day. Here we go. Come set your rule and reign.
As Susan said, today is the day we celebrate how the Holy Spirit came to earth in a rush of wind, in tongues of fire, and we are never, ever the same again. Today we will sing about the Holy Spirit, read about the Holy Spirit, we will pray for the Holy Spirit, and we have the privilege to baptize in the name of the Holy Spirit as well. Whether this is your first or thousandth time here, I am so glad you've joined us for worship and to those who join us by our television broadcast. I'm Pastor Sammy. Let's all stand together and sing Soul on Fire. Let us pray. Spirit of fire, your holy presence burns bright within this world. Spread your spirit throughout our communities so that our hearts may burn with faith, hope, and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music, and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is found in Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crown gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. Word of God, word of life. My dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, the risen Jesus Christ. Amen. I was in ninth grade, 14 years old. My mom and dad, through our church here in Sioux Falls, Hope Lutheran Church over on Cliff Avenue, had become active in the Lutheran charismatic movement a time in the church's history when some were exploring more, more fully the purpose and work of the Holy Spirit. So as a result, we three kids had the opportunity, if you know what I mean, to attend several events with mom and dad that were unlike anything we had ever experienced in church before. I mean, people stood and waved their arms in the air, some of them spoke in languages they had never learned, and others interpreted what they had been saying, speaking the language as though they'd been speaking it all of their life. And then I saw my dad go up onto stage at Lincoln High School in the auditorium, and there he was slain in the spirit. Several people gathered around him. They laid their hands on him, and one in particular prayed for him that he might be filled with the Holy Spirit. And wouldn't you know it, before long, my dad's body spasmed briefly like he'd been hit with a jolt of electricity, and then he just wilted to the ground. It was the weirdest thing I have ever seen. So that was my experience as I approached the day that I was going to be confirmed at Hope Lutheran. That moment when my parents and my baptismal sponsors and my pastor would lay their hands on me and pray that God would stir up the Holy Spirit in me. I looked forward to that day with great anticipation. I mean, what kid who'd seen what I'd seen wouldn't look forward to that? Maybe I'd experience something weird and mysterious. Maybe I'd feel that jolt of electricity and topple over in a fit of spiritual rapture. I mean, I could hardly wait. Finally, the day arrived. I can still feel the weight of those hands upon me as I think about that moment. And I remember praying silently as Pastor Flagstead prayed for me. Come on, Holy Spirit, come on. I'm ready. Bring it on. Let's do this. And then it was over. Pastor Flagstead was already praying for my classmate next to me when I realized I was still there on my knees and fully conscious to boot. <laughs> Nothing had happened, at least that I could tell. And I remember feeling very disappointed. I was ready for fireworks and smoky mist, and all I got was a slightly sweaty spot in my shirt where my uncle's giant farmer's hand had rested on my shoulder. And I wondered if all of those conferences I'd attended with mom and dad were all a hoax, or worse yet, if God had decided to pass over me. 
I was now a confirmed member of Hope Lutheran Church, but I didn't feel anything different stirring within me. Sometimes I wonder if it's because we don't feel anything stirring within us that we approach this day of days, this day of Pentecost, with at least a little bit of skepticism, if not apathy. Sure, it's a great dramatic story, the story of the birth of the church, complete with flames and wind and people speaking languages they had never learned. And we can sort of imagine the, the energy that was beginning to stir in those days as the church of Jesus Christ began to get traction and, and gain a sense of purpose and mission in the world. But that was then, and this is now, and today seems very different. Today seems ordinary in comparison as we gather for worship the church has been around for almost 2,000 years, and it all sort of feels routine. We go through the motions of singing and praying, of listening to the Word and, and receiving this holy meal, but we often, come away with, we often come away from it all feeling pretty much the same way we felt when we started. And maybe we even begin to feel like Nothing of note ever really happens here, and we wonder if it's worth all of the effort. But what the story of Pentecost and the witness of Scripture and history tell us is that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the risen Christ, is among us today in the ordinariness of life, whether we recognize her or not. Pentecost wasn't just an amazing day that happened a long time ago. It's an event that happens over and over and over again. Every time God's people experience God's power and God's presence and God's possibility through the good news of the gospel. Sure, it's true, we may feel a bit indifferent about celebrating this festival that brings to an end the great season of Easter, but that's not because God has decided to pass us by. It's not because God isn't around anymore. It's because we tend not to expect to see any evidence of the Spirit's presence and work among us. That's our tendency. Let me explain what I mean. When I have the chance to meet with new members, one of the things I always ask them is to share with the group any evidence they've seen of the Holy Spirit here at church. Almost always there is one of those uncomfortably long periods of silence. You know the one when everyone avoids looking at each other and hoping someone else will say something, and you know exactly what they're all thinking. What is this guy, crazy? Who is he? But I'm okay with what they're thinking, so I just wait them out. And soon enough, somebody risks an answer. And it doesn't take long before the conversation begins to flow with story after story of, of people having sort of these aha moments. Yeah, I guess when you think about it, I can see the Holy Spirit at work. Often they will speak of how they have experienced the Holy Spirit through the incredibly warm welcome that you all have provided them. It seems that your friendliness to strangers is a sign of the abundance of God's welcome and holy hospitality, which in turn helps them feel like they belong here. And they will also very often speak of seeing the Spirit present in our many outreach ministries or our caring ministry or our children, youth, and family ministry or our music ministry. These are Pentecost moments, times when if we're looking and paying attention, we can see and feel evidence of the Holy Spirit among us. It's not pyrotechnics and it's not levitating lay people, but it is Pentecost in the here and now. You see, the good news of Pentecost 
blows away all of our meager, paltry expectations and announces to us boldly the same powerful message the early, re early church received all those years ago, that the spirit of the risen Jesus has come and is among us. She's here right now, present in each of you, and in the person next to you, and in front of you, and behind you. The Spirit is here, forgiving our sins and receiving our praises to God. The Spirit is here in water and bread and wine, bringing the risen Jesus so close we can touch him. And the Spirit, by being present, brings power and possibility the power of faith to believe in a loving, merciful God. The possibility of grace to make whole again what, what was broken. The power of forgiveness that gives a second chance, a third chance, even a 47th chance if needed. The possibility to do great things in the name of Jesus, like love all people unconditionally feed the hungry and provide shelter for those who have none, take a stand against injustice and getting our hands dirty working for peace here locally and around the world. And through that spirit power that's in us all, new possibilities begin to emerge as God's greater mission to love and bless all of creation is fulfilled. So people of God, open your eyes, pay attention, and expect the extraordinary. Pentecost is here. The Spirit of God is present with power and possibility in the church and in the world. So let the people say, Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hallelujah, indeed. Pentecost affects each of us differently. The Holy Spirit affects each of us differently. And we hope in this next song that we can truly stir up the flame within each of your souls. Sing with us, stir up the flame.
your fire fall. We are in need of you. Our hearts are longing for your presence. Lord, let your fire fall. We are in need of you. Our hearts are longing for your presence. Lord, let your fire fall. Thank you, and thank you, Coop, for that solo. It was beautiful. <laughs> Invite family up for the baptism. Hendrix and everybody can come around here. On this Pentecost Sunday, it is our profound privilege to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, the day that the Holy Spirit becomes a permanent resident here in Hendrix's life. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death, joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Derek and Amanda, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you present Hendrix Deacon to be baptized? As you bring Hendrix to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with him among God's faithful people. To bring him to the word of God and to the Holy Supper. To teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. To place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and to nurture him in faith and prayer. So that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Hendrix grow in the Christian faith and life? Aaron, Vin, and Jackie, and Bridget, do you promise to nurture Hendrix in the Christian faith, not by your own power, but as you are empowered by God's Spirit, and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with this church? If so say, we do. People of God. Do you promise to support Hendrix and pray for him as he begins his new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Please stand. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you who are gathered here today in this community and around the font, Renounce the devil, all the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God. If so, say all together, we do. We do. Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit? If so, confess what you believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for the gift of water, through which you nourish and sustain all living things. Through water you saved Noah and his family. You led the people of Israel through the sea from slavery into freedom. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit that Hendrix, as he is washed here in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. You can bring him over to the water here. 
You want to reach in? That's okay. Hendrix Deacon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can all gather around Hendrix and place a hand on him as we pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Hendrix with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. Hendrix Deacon, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. We have a few gifts for you. First, we have this baptismal prayer shawl. See if he'll wear it, might throw it off. We'll just see what happens. Remove the temptation, all right. This prayer shawl was knit by members of our Savior's congregation. We hope that when he is wrapped in it, that he will feel the warmth of those prayers and love. We also have this candle. Could you light it please, Amanda, from this candle? As we light it, we pray that Hendrix, your light may so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And the last thing is this faith chest. Will someone take it? Great. This was also made by members of Our Savior's congregation, men who work in the wood shop. And I hope that you will keep the things that you have received today, this candle and prayer shawl, in that chest, that you will take it out every year on the anniversary of this day, and that you'll continue to add more and more things to that as the years go on, things that Hendrix might accumulate through Sunday school or Wednesday school or vacation Bible school, and things that are important to the faith of your family, and that you would open it often and tell the story of those contents. Let us give thanks to God for Hendrix with our applause. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and our Savior's congregation. We rejoice and celebrate with you in this gift of new life God gives through water and the word. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You can share God's peace with one another. Our worship continues with the giving of our offering and the children are invited forward for the noisy offering. Am I 
my soul Fan the flame and make it grow So there's no doubt or denying Please stand. Or run, that's okay too. Gathering into one by the Holy Spirit, we lift up our prayers before the living God who promises to hear them. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in the upper room calling them to go out into the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Continue to call us to this work, that we may hear your promise. Lord, in your mercy, almighty God, continue to breathe your living word into the life of your church on earth. Give us a clear focus on our mission to go forth and make disciples. Lord, in your mercy, almighty God, be with all who struggle in any way. We pray especially for those who are or who have been in the hospital, for George Henningsen, Lois Iceland, Edna Anderson, Tom Fuzzy, Darlene Barlow, Don Halligan, Arlen Guthmiller, Sandy Benson, Leroy Green, and those we name before you now. Grant healing, comfort, and peace, Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we pray for all who mourn the death of a loved one. We pray especially for the family of Lillian Oslo as they mourn her death. Grant comfort and peace to all who grieve, Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in the waters of baptism, you have called us by name, reclaiming us as your own. We thank you for the promise given to Hendricks Deacon Doyle in the waters of baptism. May he always know of your, pre of your promise for him. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is one more thing we have to pray for, and that is the forgiveness of our sins. Holy Spirit, we're not sure we're ready for your awesome power to blow through our lives. We've grown comfortable with our familiar habits and our bland routines. We're afraid to give our waking slumber and face the truth that we do not truly live. When we cling to the ways and safety of familiar paths, forgive us, wake us up, shake us up, heat us up, and breathe your life into us. Walk with us, O oh God, and give us the courage to follow the way that is lit by, your fire of, by the fire of your spirit on this Pente Pentecost and always. Give us the audacity to ride the winds of faith, hope, and love. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. He also says to you in the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone what God has done for you. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Because of what God has done for us, given us God's word, forgiven our sins, it is good for us to share in this Christian family meal. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table. Feast on God's abundant life for you. You may be seated.
Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. There are a few announcements and inserts I'd like to point out to you before we go on our way. First, Midnight Madness will be here soon, and there are many opportunities to help with this outreach to our neighbors, the students at Augustana University. To sign up, you can visit the table in the gathering place this morning or call Loretta in the church office. Please check out the open positions that are listed in your bulletin. There are current openings for the Director of Faith Formation, which used to be called the Director of Education, Celebrate Worship Coordinator, Faith Community Nurse, and did I mention the Director of Faith Formation? Can you tell I have a little investment in that one? If you know anyone who would be a good fit for any of these positions, or if you are feeling called to any of these positions, please forward the job descriptions on to them. You can find them on the website. You can find uh, them at the church office and pass it along to them in a paper copy or tell the appropriate staff person and I bet they would be happy to contact them for you. There are a number of opportunities to learn and serve coming up. First, the Friendship Club will meet this Tuesday at 1030 to hear about the Faith Temple Church Food Giveaway. And on May 19th, you are invited to come and distribute flyers to the neighbors to let them know about the upcoming bike rodeo as well as summer worship. OSL youth continue to work toward meeting their fundraising goals for the mission trips this summer. This is the last week of the envelope fundraiser. If you would like to help, simply take an envelope and place it, the amount stated inside the envelope and pass it along to Elise. Or we'll put it in the offering. It'll all end up in the right place. Our last adult education session of the year is this morning at 10 o'clock in the Friendship Room. We are happy to welcome Tom Gehring, son of Pastor Randy and Shelley Gehring, as our presenter. He will be sharing with us some of what he has learned from spending almost a year since September on the Rosebud Indian Reservation. And he'll, and this is the part I'm experiencing. I'm especially excited about. He will help us envision what a healthy relationship between a church like our Savior's and a reservation community could be like. If you have wanted to help but don't know how, he has invested the time and learning, so please go and hear what he has to say. The summer worship schedule will begin on May 29th. Worship will be at 845. Celebrate, 10 o'clock festive and 1030 celebrate. Saturday nights will be the same. Also, please note that due to a challenge of finding summer volunteers, the festive TV service will be on a hiatus for the summer, beginning May 29th, and then it will pick up again on September 11th. I would like to invite a um, member of the Mission Possible team to come up and talk about our campaign. Looks like we have Bob and Joan Timian. Good morning. Uh, we're Joan and Bob Timian. We are volunteers of the Mission Possible Task Force. At the start of 2015, Mission, Mission Possible was started with the sole purpose of raising funds to reduce the loan balance. In March of 2016, we had 298 pledges, totaling $1,165,980. Joan, what's the matter? Bob, you're talking too many numbers. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like when Augie won the National Basketball Championship. But <laughs> in April, we announced that Joyce Malinsky had made a challenge to our congregation. She will match all new gifts toward Mission Possible up to $250,000. So $20 becomes $40, $50 becomes $100, $500 becomes $1,000. Joan, it, Joan, <laughs> now you're talking too many numbers. <laughs> As always, all funds will be used to pay down the remaining loan balance. But we have great news to share. In the last few weeks, we have received 179 new pledges, gifts, and increases to existing pledges, totaling $206,000. Our goal is to reach 300 new gifts, totaling at least $250,000, by May 15th. That's today. <laughs> we are so close. So close. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
For more information about our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. But until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.